let me let me introduce myself. If, if you guys haven't been here, first off, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to the company. Um, we care about you guys a ton. So the reason we do this uh, each and every month, we've been doing it for about a year and a half, is just to get you guys familiar with how your pool operates. Um, I know my guys met with you. We give you a blast course in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour. And to be honest, it's there's way too much information to learn in, in 20, 30 minutes, you know, plus we're all excited to turn our lights on and water features, right? So, um, but but the, the thing is here is, you know, we, we just want to get with you guys and each class I'm going to go over different, you know, topics. So um, this one today, I'm going to strictly go over how to do your scheduling, you know, just the basic operation of the control panel, how to set your speeds, um, and then I'll go into how to heat uh, for heating purposes, you know, for heat pumps, gas heaters, how to turn that on and off. So that'll be some good information. Um, so definitely welcome you guys for, for, for doing our first 2016. Hope you all had a happy new year, of course. Um, just want to say hi to everybody that's online. Thank you for uh, being at home with us, listening to us today. Uh, we have some people from uh, Goodyear, some surprise and some oracles. So uh, definitely uh, thank you guys for being here. So I'm gonna get started if you guys are ready for us. Um, and I'm basically just gonna go over this control panel. Um, so for starters, let's just, um, whenever you come to this control panel here, uh, what you wanna do for starters is just always hit this first button here, and this is gonna be your menu button. Um, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna generally get you into the main functions, okay? So the first two buttons uh, you'll see is one, the menu button, which is uh, up under here, and then you have your main select button. Now, once you hit the menu button, that's gonna get you into the specific menu guide, and then your options are with the up and down arrow over here. So for example, if I wanted to go down to lights, I would hit my down arrow. You see the little triangle on the far left? See how I'm moving that little triangle up and down there? Um, so for example, if I wanted to go to lights, I would press the down arrow, go to the lights, and then I would press select. Does that make sense? Okay, so before I get into the menu, let me just go through all of these buttons. So um, first off, you're gonna see your main menu, which is auto uh, at the very top left. Now this is gonna be your main screen. So anytime you guys make any adjustments uh, for your speeds, any adjustments for schedules, what you wanna do is once you've gone into the schedule, into the speeds, uh, when you're complete and you've already made the changes, you always wanna go back, press this menu button until you see your main operation screen, which is the actual auto, uh, which is, has your air temperature, time of day, and so forth. So that's always your main screen that you wanna get back to once you've made the changes, okay? Um, so that's, that's real quick, that's what those buttons are. So as here is your F button, and then you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Um, what that means basically is depending on the size of your control panel, we have what's called an easy touch four. And what an easy touch four is, is that gives you the option with the F button, one, two, and three. If you have an easy touch eight, it gives you more options. You would then have the functionality of the buttons four, five, six, and seven. And all that means is that gives you more relays, more auxiliaries to operate more uh, equipment, lighting, uh, landscaping, stuff like that. Um, so it just gives you a bigger, broader option. So normally most pools, you're just gonna be uh, the F button, one, two, and three. But if you have um, labels above button four, five, six, and seven, that means that you have what's called an easy touch eight. And it just simply gives you more options. The bigger the pool, the more equipment you have, the eight will go on that. Basic pulls like what I have, as you notice, this is just an easy touch four. Um, and so I only have the top uh, four buttons uh, labeled. So we, from uh, left to right, we have the filter pump. That's just the main filter pump. And what that's gonna control is just generally the low speed. So anytime you come out to your control panel and you press the filter button, what that's gonna do is that's going to run your low speed on your pump. And that's also going to be the, the button that turns on or powers up the salt system if you have a salt system, okay? So, <clears throat> so does that mean if the system is off? Everything is off. you just want to come run it for a little bit, you hit the F button? Correct. And now hit 
select or just hit no the just just the f button now and that's just it on. that'll turn the pump on just like so so we'll come over here we're going to press that f button if you notice what happens is two things under auto you see how it says pool now Okay, before it didn't see nothing. So if there's nothing under pool or nothing under auto, that means that there's nothing running. So if I was to just wanted to turn my pump on, I would just walk over here, press the F button. That's going to kick my pool on in low speed. Okay, now what that also does, if you notice just to the right of pool, um, it says uh, 70 degrees. Okay, that means that the water is 70 degrees. That's your ambient temperature of water that's in the, in the pool at that time. Okay, the number to the far right would be the number that you set to heat it at. So let's say, for example, you wanted to heat the pool. Um, the number on the far right would represent the number uh, or temperature that you would like the pool to be heated at. Okay, and I'll go through the heating after. So just to give you that information, auto pool underneath, that just means that the pool is on. The first uh, number next to it on the right is the degree that the actual pool is. The number on the far right is the temperature that you have set for the pool to heat if, if you're heating it. Um, underneath is air, and, and to the right is the air temperature, and then time of day. One thing I highly recommend is um, a lot of times we go out to uh, a lot of pools, and their schedules are coming on at 10 o'clock, but they're supposed to come on at 8 o'clock. Well, the only thing that's happened is the time is off, okay? So if something's kicking on, but it's not kicking on right on time, Always check the time below because that's the majority of the time that's the problem. And it just could be a short power outage that's, you know, allowed a, a, an hour or so to lapse. So always make sure whenever you kick this on that you're on the right time. Okay. So let's, let's start now. Now what I did is if you notice, I just pressed the filter button. And basically what that does is gives me the light above the filter. And if you notice, that's turned on my salt cell over here. Okay. So the only buttons... The only buttons that actually um, are turning on uh, the salt cell is this F button and this V button. Okay, <laughs> now V button will not uh, will not be needed whatsoever unless you have a spa. Okay, so if you don't have a spa, basically this F button would be the only button that you're going to turn on that's going to kick on the low speed. Okay. And now, just hit it to shut it off. Yep. As soon as you're done, let's say you want it off, you just simply press the button. And then what you'll notice is the light above it goes away, and under auto, pull with the information goes away. Okay? So that's just how you turn on your low speed. The next one, uh, button one, is simply just pull lights. Pull light would just be on or off. It's just that simple. And I'll go through the menu of how to change the color and so forth. Um, but, but as of right now, that's just the on or off button. Button number two here is the cleaner button. Now, what cleaner represents is your high speed. So you have a low speed, which is filter button. Then you have a cleaner button, which is your high speed. Normally, we only have two speeds set for your pump unless you have a water feature, of course. But so you're going to, everyone's going to have a low speed. Everyone's going to have a high speed. Low speed, just for water circulation. High speed, is just for cleaning only. Same circulation of water just different speeds, different pressures, okay? Um, and then, of course, number three is just simply a water feature button. If you have a water feature, now this, these can be changed around in any direction. So your, your, yours may say water feature here and pool light here. It's not a big deal, no difference. Just, just I happen to label it that way. So this button number three is your water feature button, okay? No, I was told you can't run the water feature when the filter is running. Is that true? You can, but just remember each speeds are set. So if you ever want to run a water feature speed, it's good to turn everything off first, then go to your water feature because then it'll go right to that speed. The, the problem is, is let's say your water feature speed is lower than your high speed. Okay. So what happens is if your high speed's running first, you've got a real high speed. Then you turn your water features on. It's going to naturally go to the higher speed because the higher speed takes priority. Does that make sense? So the best thing is anytime you're turning a water feature on or off, shut everything off first. Make sure everything is completely off. Then turn your water feature on. And then it'll go to that particular speed that's designed for that size water feature. And then can you still turn your filter on? Yeah. <laughs> well, just remember, when your pump is on, your filter's on. Right, but you turn the water feature on first, then you turn the pump on. No, no, no. That's all on one button. 
one button press. So when you go to turn your water feature on, you press the water feature button here, that turns the pump on, that turns the valve for you, and turns your water features on. If, for example, you turn your pump on, your water features does not come on, you may have to manually rotate a valve. But majority of you, if you have a water feature like at mine, I have the shear descent, I press one button that turns my pump on for me, and that rotates a valve automatically for me and my water feature comes on, okay, at that speed. So what if you just want to turn the water feature on the valve? You can't. The pump's got to circulate the water for you to create the water. Unless you have separate pumps. Exactly. Water. Now, you may have a water, you know, and that's the tough thing is everybody's backyard is different, so there may be a little bit of differences, but just remember that if, if your pump's not running, nothing's going to be working because that pump has to take the water out of the pool and then pour it through the actual water feed, okay? But, but just remember though, if you have your water feed, if your pool is on high speed, make sure you turn that off first, then turn your water features on. Oh, no problem, okay? So, so we, we know the function of these. Again, these are just on and off presses. This is just on and off, turning it manually on or off, okay? Uh, I'll go over the programming next. Uh, one of one of the most important one of the most important um, things here is this mode button. Um, this actual mode button here, and what that does is there's three functions to this mode button. Okay, again, we got to make sure that this auto is staying here. Okay, um, but if you press this button for some reason, what happens is see this these two buttons here are pretty close to each other. So what happens is, is there's three functions to this mode button. There's auto, there's service, and there's timeout, okay? Let's say, for example, you go to turn your water feature on or your pool lights, and all of a sudden, from your remotes or from your iPhones, if you have a screen logic, things aren't working, okay? The first thing you want to do is, remember, always come back to your main screen here, uh, which is the main control screen, and this time it doesn't say auto, it says service, Okay. What that means is you, somebody has, either you accidentally or, or a pool guy has accidentally put it in the service mode, which kills all communication to the control panel, okay? Now what that does is a lot of pool guys do this. They'll put it in the service mode, okay? Then they'll press the filter pump on, okay? Just like so. Now what that's going to do is it's still going to operate the pump. It's still going to turn the salt cell on. But what, in service mode, once the button's pressed, it's pressed indefinitely until the button gets repressed off. So that means in service mode, nothing's controlled from the remotes, only from the panel. Whatever's pressed on the panel will stay on 24-7 until somebody manually comes over and turns it off, okay? Um, so if you ever see this service in this, in this screen here, you want to go immediately over here to this mode button, press it until the very top says auto, okay? So now you have one other function by pressing this button, and it's called the timeout mode. And pool guys like to use this as well. And what that does is let's say he put a chemical in your pool, or you put a chemical in your pool, and you've got to run out, okay? But you want the pump to run. But you're not going to be here to make sure the pump turns off. You can press the mode button, put it in timeout, and then you would turn your pump on, okay? Now, the only problem with this is when you're in service or timeout, your pump communication is gone. So now you would have to go to your pump itself and turn the pump on. But what happens is a lot of pool guys like to do this because they've put a chemical in your pool, they're trying to leave, and they'll put it in the timeout mode, They'll manually turn your pump on, okay, by going to the pump. That's going to run for three hours, okay? Once three hours is up, what happens is it automatically puts itself back into the auto mode, okay? So in timeout is not necessarily a bad thing because in three hours, everything goes right back to normal. All the scheduling goes back to normal. All the functionality goes back to normal. Um, and then you're back in the auto mode. Does that make sense to everybody? So just remember, if something's not working correctly, take a quick glance at the panel, make sure it says auto, okay? If you're- How did you get to the timeout again? Oh, just by pressing this mode button here, sorry. The question was how to get to uh, the timeout mode. 
And if, if you look on this box here, there's auto service and timeout, and it's just by continually pressing this mode button here. Um, and it's this mode button here. So again, you come out for one, for some reason, nothing's working. You see it in the service mode. You know that's not the mode to be in. You're going to come over here to this mode button like so, and you're just going to press it twice to get you back into auto. And then once you're in auto, all the remotes come back to normal, all the scheduling gets back to normal, and you're back in business. Okay, does that make sense? So you said after the three hours, it will automatically switch yeah, In timeout. And some pool guys use that. And there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't hurt anything. It just puts you in standby for three hours, and then it shuts everything off and goes right back to the normal programming and normal functionality for the remote system. Okay. Strictly for pool guys, or let's say, for example, we're working on something and we don't want you guys in the house to turn it on while we're working on something. Sometimes we'll put it in service mode just because it kills anything. And then that way we can do our repairs and we know something's not going to get turned on automatically. Okay. But again, when you're done, uh, always make sure this is in the auto, uh, auto mode. Okay. Uh, the next button over you're going to see is the V button. And basically what this V button is, is if you have a spa, this is strictly for the spa function. Now what this V button does is it turns your spa on for you. It rotates the valves for you and fires up the heater for you all in one button press. Okay. So if you do have a spa, anybody have a spa in here? Okay. So if you don't have your remote or you don't have the iPhone, let's say, you just simply go to this V button, press it one time just like so. And what you'll notice here is under auto, it says spa. Okay. Now remember what this number is. What's that first number mean? Ambient, Ambient water temperature in your pool or spa right now. So being that we're in the spa, this is the water temperature in your spa. Okay. The number to the right of it is what the water temperature that we're asking uh, the spa to become, which is a hundred degrees. Okay. Now, if you notice, uh, when we press this spa button, in the top right here, you'll see heater, okay? And what that means is, is that this number on the right is bigger than this number because you're wanting this number to become this number. Does that make sense? So uh, heater on the top right, you'll see, and that just means that it's engaging the gas heater. Also with this heater uh, uh, decal here, you'll notice on the far right over here where it says heater, you'll see a red light above it because you're asking for the heater to turn on, okay? Now, if you're running the filter pump, can you hit the V button, the spot will kick on? At any time. At any time. Okay. Yeah, yep, at any time. Um, so once you hit that spa heater, it's a one button press. And that's why we like this system. It's just a one button press. It turns everything on for you and fires it up to temperature. And I'll show you uh, how, to, how to change the temperature uh, here very shortly. But anyway, so here's your main menu. Spa is in the mode that we're in. 70 degrees is the water in the spa. Heater, we're asking it to heat at 100 degrees. And that's why we have the red light over here above heater because we're asking it to heat. Okay. And then when we're done, uh, of course, on your remote or your iPhone would be better to turn it off. But again, if you don't have that, you walk right over to this control panel and you press your V button. And what that does is that shuts the pump off. That rotates the valve back to the pull mode, and that shuts your heater off, okay? Now, um, in spa mode is the only time the spa heater will turn on automatically, okay? It's the only time it'll automatically turn on. If you're wanting to heat the pool, you'd have to manually go into the heat menu and turn the pool heat on, and I'll show you how to do that, okay? Any questions with the just basic controls here with the, with the buttons? Um, real quick, over to the far right, okay, you're going to see three, uh, three little three amp fuses, okay? Now, these are just like any, any other type fuse um, that are out there. It's just a, a safety scenario. And if anything's wrong with a particular item, that fuse will pop out, okay? Now, what these four fuses do are um, it runs all the electronics from the top left, and all the electronics meaning uh, all of these top features and functions in this little display here, okay? So if for some reason you see this little three amp fuse will just turn white, not the whole button, but it'll actually swing out like this and underneath it's all white, 
you'll kind of know. So for example, if you ever come to the control panel or something's not working, take a look at the control panel. If you don't see any power, there could be this little three amp fuse that just popped out on you, okay? I recommend pressing it in one time. If you press it in and it holds, and all of a sudden your screen comes to light, fantastic. If you press it in and it pops itself right out, you make a call to presidential pools, there's something else going on. There's a reason why the fuses pop. There's a reason why breakers pop, you know, or trip. Um, something's made that happen. But what happens is in this state, we have a lot of lightning strikes, right? Um, and so there's what's called ground fault circuit interruption. And all that does is that can trip very small fuses and, and stuff like that. So you may just have a trip from, um, you know, a, a lightning strike or a ground fault, okay? And that can pop those. So um, the next one over is you can't see, and I apologize, it's called the valves. And that's the same scenario. There may be something wrong with the valves, and that would trip that little, that little uh, deal. Uh, most of the time are chewed wires type things, stuff like that. Uh, the next one are relays. Uh, so, for example, if you have any trouble turning things on here and this is popped out, try to press in one time. That may fix it right then and there for you. And then the fourth one is what's called the IntelliClore. Let's say, for example, you're over here. You press your button like so, but you don't get any power on the cell. It doesn't light up, okay? You may just have a pop fuse over here that you can simply press in. If your lights come back on your cell like so, hey, we're back in business. Everything's good. If this stays pr uh, pressed out, let's say, uh, underneath here is this IntelliClore. Um, if that does stay pressed out, give us a call. There's something going on with the cell. Okay, so just a little precaution stuff, but I like to at least show you what those are. Is that one specifically for salt? Yes. Not so it's, for chlorine? No, no, no. That strictly powers up this, this little chlorinator here. So if I don't have that, I only have three buttons. You'll only have three. Absolutely. So, but it's just good to know because, you know, it could, of course, things happen. When do they happen? Saturday night, Sunday morning, when no one's around, right? That's when things happen. So if I don't let you know about that, I'd, I'd be failing you. So just always keep an eye on little stuff like that. So if, you know, you don't see power on something, you know, just check the faceplate. Make sure there's nothing that looks like it's out of the ordinary. You know, try resetting it. If the reset one time doesn't work, give us a call and we'll get out and figure out what's wrong. Okay? Any questions so far? We'll keep moving. All right, so the next thing I'm going to go in is what's called schedules, okay? And, and what this does here is when you press, again, everything you want to change or go into the programming, you're going to start with the menu button here. You're going to simply press that menu button one time, uh, and then you're going to start to see your main screen here, your main setup uh, of uh, functions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the down arrow, and we're going to first off scroll down to where it says schedules, just like so. Now, once I've seen the word or the operation that I want to adjust, then I'm going to press the select button. Okay. So it's menu to the, to the main menu. It's the up and down arrow to find what I want to adjust. Okay. Uh, and then it's the select button because that's the part that I want to adjust. So for example, if I wanted to go to lights, I would go up to lights like so, and then press select. But this time we're gonna go down the schedules because that's what I wanna show you how to adjust. Then you're gonna press your select button, okay? Now see what that does is, that puts us into the schedule menu, okay? Now, what you'll notice here is on the top right where it says spa, there is zero programs. That's good, we don't want a program for spa. We don't want the spa coming on every day at a specific time, okay? There's no reason for that. So what you'll notice is underneath where it says pool, you'll see a number one, okay? So let's say, for example, remember, pool represents low speed, cleaner represents high speed. That's the only difference, okay? So we're gonna go down because we wanna see what our low speed is doing. So we're gonna down arrow to low speed and we're gonna press the select button, okay? And what that's going to do is, if you notice from top here, is there's one of one schedule. You only need one schedule, okay? So if this says two of two, that means you have two schedules. I've seen nine of nine. And the customer's going, hey, my pump's on and it's off and it's on and it's off. I don't know what's going on. 
it's because we've accidentally added some schedules there. And I'll show you how to delete those. But for right now, you only want one of one, okay? So remember, it's just like a time watch or a stopwatch or anything. Anything that's blinking is what can be changed, okay? So for example, I have this set up right now at 10 o'clock at night. It's going to turn on and the off time is 8 in the morning, okay? So every day at 10 o'clock, the pump turns on low speed and it's going to run till 8 a.m. So let's say I wanted to change that 10 p.m. to midnight, okay? Or that 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press this select button, okay? Until I find the, until what, see how now it's the schedule that's blinking? Now if I press it one more time, now there's the time blinking. Now remember, whatever's blinking is what can be changed. So once you get the part that you want to change blinking, now it's just about the up and down arrow, okay? So for example, if I wanted to change that to 8 p.m., I would simply press the down arrow twice, just like so, okay? And then always remember, whenever you're done, menu, 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 back out to auto. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's just go real quick. I'll go, I'll go back to it. So there's your pool. We're going to press select button, and you're going to see one of one, and then there's your new time, 8 to 8, okay? Now, the biggest mistake that we all have made, including myself when we started this game, is instead of pressing select right away, we got handy in pressing the up arrow. OK, so here's what happens if you don't press select right away. You accidentally press the up arrow. OK, now you see what that did. It's automatically giving me a secondary schedule. We don't want two schedules. We only wanted one. So just by a press of a button, I've already added an eight to five schedule. So remember, I have my first schedule at eight to eight. Now I have another schedule at eight to five in a day. OK, so let me show you how to fix that. So if you have a two of two or a three of three or a four of four, you want to get rid of them down to one of one because you only need one schedule for low speed, okay? So what you do is you press the select button one time. And where it says mode, um, now it's going to be schedule. And we want to change that schedule. We want to delete it. So we're going to change that schedule to delete. And then we're going to press select. You see how now we're back to one of one? That's what we're looking for. So remember, anytime you go in here and you press your select button, one of one is blinking. The first thing you do, you don't want to come over here. You want to go right over here to your right arrow and select it and select it again until you're on the number. Because really the numbers is all we're going to change, the time, right? So there's no reason to change the schedule because the mode is scheduled and that's what we want. The time is all we want to change. I'll go through one other thing real quick is I normally never put minutes here. I just leave it a standard solid time. So if, if it's 8, I don't do 8.05 or 8.06. I, I just don't. So uh, what that represents is minutes. So this is your off time. Okay, so 8 p.m. Uh, or 8 a.m., sorry, if I wanted to change that, I would just use the upper down arrows um, to, to change that from whatever time I want, okay? I highly recommend the best thing you can do is call your SRP APS, find out what your on, off peak times are, work your pump around those on peak times. Trust me, they love to make sure that you're paying more money at the prime time, right? As soon as we get home, we want to do laundry, we don't want to do dishes, we want to do everything else. That's when our high rates are, you know, and we end up doing laundry at midnight. We don't, we don't like that, you know, but that's what, that's what happens. So, um, but, but you understand how to change the time now. Okay. The next function underneath that, you'll see uh, SMTWTFS, and that's just the time, that's just the actual days itself. Now, let's say, for example, um, as you're, as you're pressing select here, if you'll notice, if I keep going here, you're going to see Sunday start to blink, right? Now, a line over the day means that's the day it's running. I highly recommend to run your pool every day, okay? Don't do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. In this state, it's just not enough. It's too much heat, and you need to run and circulate the pump every single day as I do, okay? So I highly recommend each one of these has a line over it, um, and, and then that will 
uh, let it, make sure that it runs every single day, okay? But if you wanted to, let's say we don't want it to run on a Sunday, right? All we would do is make that S blink, and then we would just press the select button. Oh, I'm sorry, you would press the um, up and down arrow. Now see how that M no longer has a line above it? Okay, so that means that Sunday it's on, Monday it's off, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday it's on. Does that make sense? So if a line is not above it, that day is not getting the pump turned on. So for example, if you see, hey, my pump works every day, but for some reason on a Monday, it's not running. Just double check your schedule and make sure that that M for Monday has a line over it. If it doesn't, then you know that's the problem. And then you remember, we'll go back into here. We'll press select. And then we're going to remember, don't push the arrows. We're going to select all the way back over until that M is blinking. See the Sunday now? See here? We're going to go one more. Now that M is blinking, we're going to use the up or down arrow, sorry. And now we have our line above M, and that is back on schedule for Monday. Okay, I would never go into that. I don't ever worry about touching that. So once you've adjusted your times here, your best bet would be simply pressing the menu button uh, once you're done and just get out of that program altogether. And how many times, when, what, what are we looking for? Auto. There's your main screen. So now you're back to normal. The menu button three times, get back to normal. Always. Any adjustments you make in the schedules, any adjustments you make in the speed, go right back to auto just so you know that that adjustment is taken. All right, we've got a couple questions here. At the very bottom, uh, does low speed pump need to be scheduled to run every day, even in the winter months when temps are lower? One Harper Mike uh, from Surprise asked that question. Definitely, I would highly recommend running a low speed every day. But what I do on my personal pool is I actually knock a couple hours off my low speed, okay? Now, here's what I do for my pool, and it works very well. I always set my high speed to just have enough time to clean my pool. That's high speed. I never, ever change that. That stays the same every day, all day, all summer, all year round. Now, I want to change my low speed time because I don't need to run the pool as long in the winter as you do in the summer. So what I will do is I'll go into my low speed and I will take a couple hours off of my low speed only. Okay. But I always leave my high speed the same because I want it to clean the same in June as I do in January. You know what I mean? I want the pool to stay clean, but if you want, if you're looking to save a little bit of money and you want to not as run at your pump as long you can definitely change the, the time it's running as far as longevity goes. Just adjust the low speed, not the high speed, okay, which is cleaner. Only, only leave the cleaner, you know, the cleaner schedule as the three to four hours. Don't ever change that. But if you have six hours in low speed, go ahead and take an hour or two off of your low speed, you know, to save that money. With the low speed, again, I have a saltwater pool. So does it matter what time of day you do that? Is it best to do it at night or does it matter? It doesn't really matter. It's completely up to you. I like to run my low speed, and this is just me. I like to run my low speed first thing in the morning. I run a low speed from six to noon because I have the one to, to seven, one to seven, one to nine high peak times on my SRP. So what I like to do is I like to circulate my water low speed in the morning. Gets my pool ready, right? Because we've got a hot day coming. Then I'll clean my pool about 10 o'clock at night to two in the morning. Now that may not work for you. Now here's, here's one other thing I recommend for you, right? I have two split schedules, but I have a floater with tablets in my pool, okay? Not because I don't like salt, that just, it works for me. Um, but if you have a salt system, I highly recommend to keep your times consistent instead of two separate times. What I mean by that is, what you'll do is you'll go in and you will set a one big schedule for your pool. And let me show you what I do here. Um, we're going to hit the menu button. Remember, down the schedules. Okay. We're going to select on schedules and we're going to go down the pool and we're going to press select. Now, what I will do is if you have a salt system, I tend to come over here and I'll set this at 10 p.m. 
uh, at night to run it until eight in the morning. Okay. Now that's just low speed. But what I be, because remember, high speed takes priority. What I do then is I go out of my schedule now, and instead of going to pull, I'll go down to cleaner. Okay. And I'll press select. And uh, let me just let me just set you up a new schedule real quick. Um, and once once now here's our high speed, right? So then what I do is I take my high speed and I make my high speed come on at two in the morning. Okay. And I'll run that to eight in the morning. Okay, so you see what I've done there? So what's what what's happening now is my low speed kicks on at 10 o'clock at night. Okay. And it's gonna run till 2 a.m. And then the, the panel's gonna say, hey, my high speed needs to be on. So at 10 o'clock at night, my low speed runs to 2 a.m. And then because high speed, which is cleaner, takes priority over anything low speed. So the higher the RPM will override the lower RPM. Does that make sense? So then what happens at 2 a.m., my high speed kicks on, but what doesn't happen is my pump doesn't shut off. My power doesn't shut off to my cell. So my cell gets turned on at 10 p.m. It's running low speed to 2 a.m. Nothing turns off. The pump just goes from low speed to high speed to clean the pool for the remainder of the time until 8 a.m. Does that make sense to everybody? So even though I have a 10 to 8 schedule for pool, there's two functions in there. That's running 10, 10, or 10 p.m. It's going to run till 2 a.m. in low speed, and then it's just going to change the pump speed from low to high, and it's going to clean to 8 in the morning. So really, I, will, I only have a 10-hour window total, but I have both speeds set in that 10 hour window. But the biggest thing about it is, is it keeps that salt cell on the entire time my pump's running. That's what you want. You want to chlorinate any time that pool pump is on. Now, let me show you one thing that'll kind of tie this in together. If you notice, my salt cell over here is power. It has power is because this light is on. This is my low speed, right? So when I and I didn't do what I told you you should do is get back in auto. But see when this button is off, that my low speed, if you notice, my salt cell is off over here. No power to it. Now, if I come over here to my cleaner button, which is my high speed, and I turn that on, now my pump turns on. But guess what doesn't turn on? My salt cell over here. You know why? Because the only button that powers the salt cell is this F button and the V button. So this F button, if this is not lit up and powered, my salt cell does not get power, okay? So neither does this V button. This V button is not in, so my salt cell doesn't have power. So here's what happens if you schedule it, like I say. Your low speed kicks on at 10 o'clock at night, okay? And it's, and it's now turned your cell on and it's chlorinating. 2 a.m., the high speed kicks on, remember? <coughs> But what happens is, is this does not turn off. This just turns on. Does that make sense? So now I have this on, which is keeping my cell powered up. My cleaner has now turned on because it's a time that's set at 2 a.m. And then at 8 in the morning, both turn off. Does that make sense? So now I've just combined the times. So my salt cell is running in low speed. Until 2 a.m., it doesn't turn off. All it does is turns the pump on from low to high. Everything keeps circulating. The salt stays on the entire time. That's the best case scenario, okay? So if you have salt, I, I, I advise you to combine the time. If you don't have salt, you can have completely separate schedules. It doesn't matter. But that's my recommendation for you. It seems like since we have our pool, we've never touched this pan. And it seems like that it starts out in a really high RPM. Yes. And then it drops down. Let me explain that. What it is is there's a self-priming on the pump. Some of your pools will leave it on. And it's just what that does is it goes really high right away. It's just making sure that pump has a sufficient amount of water. And then it goes right back to that normal level. Unless you've turned it on high originally. So let's say you press your low speed here. 
and you're thinking, wow, that's going to be my low speed. Vroom, everything goes on. You're going, wait, that's not low. It's just a priming feature. It just makes sure that your pump has a sufficient amount of water uh, to circulate properly. Then it'll go back down to its low speed. However, we figured out that if you have water features, right, the little jets, the little water features, those don't like the priming speed. They want to be right at their perfect level. So then what happens is if we leave the priming on, it goes way over and then it comes back down. Does that make sense? So if you have a specific water feature um, that we don't want to get too high or cause any issues, we'll just disable the priming speed. Okay. And it just on particular pools. You don't necessarily need it. Um, it's just something if, if, if you want it. So for years, it probably works good. I would leave the priming on. But you can yes, disable it if you want. It has a water feature. Yeah. You, know, you turn that on. And what was confusing is when I turned the jets on, Yeah. I have to turn the water feature on. And then I turn my jets on, and that turns the water feature off. It was real. Yeah, it's something backwards there. There's something a little confusing there. See, well, basically. They came out and looked at it, and they said, yeah, you just turn your water feature on first. Yeah. And then you have to go in, and then after that valve, yeah. works, then you turn your. And you may have a setup to where you have it to where you need two functions to operate something because some people have, they'll have a water feature and then on that pump, they'll have another function that will work with that. So then sometimes you'll have to turn that pump on that gets the water flowing and that sends water to, let's say a water feature. But if you want the second feature, then you'll have to hit a secondary button that'll shut that water feature off and open up another feature. So it just depends. Each pool is a little different. Um, we got the high and the low on the button, so I can change the water flow. Of the you can't, and and that's that's the that's the options. But really, you just want to make sure that you know if you have a water feature, yeah, you can have your water feature speed, let's say at two thousand, and you can just kick on your high speed, which is cleaner, right? Because that's higher than two thousand. It'll go to that water flow. But the problem is, is it it works if you have like a regular waterfall because. It's not a big deal because you have that extra water. But if you have like little planter pots, little spillway pots, or little deck jets, you don't want that high speed because it just way overshoots everything. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we set a specific speed to where when you press it, it's a perfect flow each time. Okay? But we'll, we'll, we'll have to go over some details. But again, each pool is different, so it's kind of tough to, to correlate. Just a quick one on the, the same thing with the speeds. When it, when it kicks on at the full RPM, yeah. does it actually do two steps if it's going to the pool mode? Because I've heard mine that starts real fast, it'll run for about 15 seconds through the climbing. Then it'll seem like it goes into the cleaner mode speed, and then it'll kick down to the pool. Uh, it just depends. It just depends if something's engaged to turn on. That's all it is. But let's say, for example, nothing's on. You go to turn your low speed on by just pressing the F button, and it goes up real high. I wouldn't worry about it. Just let it, you know, let it do its thing. It'll get down to the low speed that you've originally asked for, and that's it. Um, your best case scenario, again, though, if you're looking to turn a water feature on, make sure everything's off first. Again, high speed takes priority. So whatever is the highest speed. If whatever's been pressed, that high speed will override anything that's under it. Water features are always going to be lower than the high speed cleaning speed. So, for example, if you turn your water feature on, you got this nice waterfall, and then you go over and hit your cleaner button. The cleaner button has more power, more flow, more speed. It's going to, all it's going to do is put more water out of your water feature. Makes okay? it really noisy. Makes it really noisy. We don't want noisy. We want a nice little trickle, right? Chlorinator tank, how is that? Does the water speed affect how that works? No, not necessarily. We, we set it basically on the high speed volume. So in low speed, you'll still get the flow. You just won't get the, as much as the high speed, but it still works. It still, yeah, it still works exactly the same in low and high. Um, but the, the pressure differential is just, just pretty much the same. So quickly, low speed versus high speed, what's the main difference? The only difference is low circulation, very slow moving water and low speed. The lower the speed, the more particles that the filter can collect. The higher speed, the faster moving, more pressurized water. That's what pops the heads up and really gives you that clean. So the heads pop up on high speed, not on low speed. 
Yeah, in low speed, they still will. They just won't have the oomph. You know what I mean? They won't have that water pressure. So if you pull a little dirty, it was high speed. Yes, low speed is just to circulate that water. It's not to clean the pool. It's not to run the vacuum around. Okay, it's so just low to... speed doesn't clean. Correct. Okay. All that does is just takes that body of water, slowly moves it through the filter, puts it right back to the pool. Just ever so elegant, you know, nice and smooth. Well, that's technically cleaning it though. Right? It's not technically cleaning. It's just turning the water because you have to have within 12 hours uh, is, is the national standard to take your body of water through the filter within 12 hours to be sanitized. Right. Okay. Properly sanitized. It's just circulation of water. So back in the old days, we would have eight hours. It would run high speed for eight hours, right? Well, your pool's clean in three. So why are we running at eight hours way up here? You know what I mean? You're losing money. So the beautiful thing about these variable speed pumps are, we're just going to clean it as we're going to make that window in high speed, just enough to clean the pool, three hours, four hours. And then the rest, drop it down. When it's low, it's saving you money. Less wattage, less amperage less money you're paying so for a salt water pool you would suggest doing the four and four four and four if you have a salt pool though you want to make one big window remember right, one big eight, eight hour window. And four hours for each perfect and just run it boom absolutely now, what about in the heat of the summer uh do you need to have it obviously you don't want to have it during the day because you know it's going to cost a it's lot cost more, more money and but it's hot yeah is it going to be an issue to not have Water circulating during the day when it's hot. Not at all, because you're 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 already sanitizing it through the night and you're okay. cleaning it through the night, so it's kind of prepared. For me, I don't have the chlorinator, so that's why I split mine. I run my I like to circulate my water in the morning, right before it gets crazy, you know, before it gets the, the heat. And then what that does is it tur circulates all my chlorine, makes sure that my pool is kind of prepared for the day. Then at night I clean it, right? If I have a salt system. I would combine my times to where when it turns on, it runs the full eight hours, let's say, yeah. and shuts off for the rest of the day. And then the next day does the same thing. So you can run the eight hour anytime during the year. Does it anytime. Hot or winter, A absolutely. An eight hour window for salt would be sufficient. Sufficient. Now, what I recommend you do is once it starts cooling off, take an hour off your low speed. Okay. It's not going to hurt you. You saved an hour of runtime. You saved an hour of energy. Right, take two hours off, and then if you start to see a difference in the pool, or you know, it's all of a sudden it was crystal clear, and I take a couple hours off, and now it's starting to look a little cloudy. Put your hours back on, you know what I'm saying? Because it needed that turn, but yeah, adjust your times um, for the winter and then add your times back for the summer. So, I highly recommend keeping your high speed the same, only adjust the low speed times. So, the max you run it is the heat of the summer will be what. Depends on the body of water. The rule of thumb is one hour for every 10 degrees. 10 degrees of air temperature? Yes. Okay, 100 so degrees out, 10 hours. 120 so, so out. So say 10 hours, how much is low speed, how much is high speed? I would run four hours high, six hours low. Okay. Always four. So it sounds like always four hours. Three to four speed. hours, yeah. Vacuum, about three hours will clean that pool pretty good. And I'm just talking a basic everyday play pool i'm not you know we've got a 60 we've got a eighty thousand dollar we call the lakes you know what i mean it's it's a big pool in three hours that pool's not going to clean you know what i mean so they're going to run six hours high speed and and maybe eight hours low speed you know what i mean they, the bigger body of water the more usage you have the more you have to run the more you have to chlorinate but standard pools like what we have and what i have um eight to ten hours is max you know, again, three to four hours tops uh, for cleaning, and then the rest low speed. So with a salt pool, if the chlorine level is getting too high, is it best to cut the time of the low speed or cut the output of the salt cell? Cut the output of the salt cell. Always keep your time. It's worth it, folks, to run your pool. Trust me. People call us up, hey, my pool's not looking good. It ain't doing well. It's looking cloudy. We go over there, you're running it for two hours. Well, that's not going to clean your pool, and that's not going to chlorinate your pool in Arizona. Arizona is a different demon, folks. Let me tell you. It's, you know, I wish most products that we go over, you know, it's set up for worldwide, let's say. Well, Arizona is a different scenario. It's you got to change things a little bit differently in Arizona. You got to chlorinate it heavy. You have to run it long time. You know what I mean? Where in Michigan, you can 
cut the time in half. You know, the, the weather is totally different, um, you know, and you have to chlorinate a lot less. You know, in Arizona, high, high heat creates algae. More chlorine you need, you know what I mean? The more runtime you need. What about like during monsoons when you get the dust? And I recommend if you see it coming, kick the pump on. Let it run. It ain't going to hurt you. On. Kick the high speed on. Get things circulating. Get things moving right now. You know what I mean? So all that dirt that comes in the pool is already getting tossed out and put in a filter for you. Does that make sense? So should, it's set now and it's running like from 8 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. Yeah. And that's when the heater is running as well. Yeah. So in the heat of the summer, should we change that and let it only run at night? Absolutely. Because use your off-peak. Try to set everything up on the off-peak time. You're going to save money for one. Now, here's a, here's a different case scenario. Let's say you have a heat pump and you're trying to heat your pool for a heat pump. Well, that's not going to work at night. So what I do with those is I set them up to run all day long. But you're heating it. It's different than just a normal everyday schedule. If you're trying to heat the pool and keep it heat, you're going to want to run your schedule first thing in the morning and shut it off right before the sun sets. Run it all day long. Right, because you're trying to heat it. Totally different ball game. If you're not heating it, just run it when just just the times that you need to clean it and and circulate it. But if you're heating it, total different element. You're gonna want to run that, you know, the, the the full day. And then when you're done heating, go right back to your normal schedule. Does that make sense? Or if the pump's off, you can manually turn it on. Let it run all day. Let it do its cycle. It'll shut itself off, and you next day you turn it back on manually. I do that for some people too. It, it just depends on if you like to go in the schedules or not. Some people no, are really good. Using the pool. I mean, like uh, January, it, when it, January 1st, when it was really kind of cool. Yeah. We tried heating the pool. We could never get it a decent temperature to even swim in. With a gas heater? No, it's a heat pump. Yeah, so you want to kick it on, you know, right when that heat pops up in the morning, you know, 7 a.m. But you want to run it all day till about 10 o'clock at night shut it off at night right right when the you know the temperature starts to drop you got to go off of the temperature with a heat pump so you want to use the hottest times of the day run it all day long every day while you're trying to heat it and then when you're done heating shrink your schedule back to normal so for heating it's totally different okay and i'll go i'll go in more depth in the heat for you so let's get back to this real quick um, so everybody feel a little bit better about the schedules, just a little bit, you, you kind of get it there. And again, here's the biggest thing. The biggest thing I can tell you is don't be afraid of mucking it up. Get in there, press some buttons. If you, if you booger it up, call us, we'll walk you through it. But the thing is, is if you're afraid to touch it and a lot of people are, they really are. But what happens is, is you'll never get it. If you're afraid to touch, get in there and start. Screws it up there you go. Fix it. <laughs> Hey, but the best thing is, is the second, three, third time you do it, you're like, you know what, boom, real easy. And it benefits you to learn because the more you adjust it, the more money you're saving and, and stuff like that. I have some egg timers set. Like, egg timers. Like for, the, for like the high speed case, I just want to turn it on and I walk away. I perfect. Keep running forever. Let me go through that. Set for an hour. That's okay to do that. Absolutely perfect. Let me go through the egg timer. So in your, in your schedule, you're going to press her. Again, we're going to schedules, menu button. We're going to go down here to where it says schedules, okay? And you're going to press select, okay? We're going to go down here, and let's say, see how this pool light says zero? I want to put what's called an egg timer on this, and this is what I did at my pool. I press select on the pool light, and I'm going to change this from none to uh, new first, and then I'm going to press select. And then see how we have one of one schedule. So right now, if I left that like that, my pool light's going to come on at every day at 8 and shut off at 5 p.m., okay? So I'm going to go one farther, and I'm going to press the select button until schedule uh, starts to blink. And then I'm going to change that from schedule to egg timer, okay? Now, once I see where it says egg timer, let's say, for example, I want this pool light Whenever I turn it on to come off, turn off by itself in two hours, okay? So then I'm going to go over here, press select, and I'm going to take this down from 12 hours to two hours. Now, let me tell you, if you have kids, this is a beautiful thing. So now you see how I have one of one. 
Under pool light, the mode is egg timer. And egg timer is exactly what it means. It's an egg timer. So whenever that pool light is pressed over here, whenever that light is on, pool light now, I just turned my pool light on, it has an egg timer of two hours. In two hours, that pool light will automatically turn itself off. I love it. I wish I had an egg timer for my kids' bathroom and their rooms. <laughs> I put it on everything, trust me, because they're famous for leaving lights on. But um, the cool thing about this is it's an egg timer. So you could do it for your cleaner. You could just add a secondary schedule, right? Remember I told you how to make, to not to do, but you have to do because that's how you get into the egg timer. You would just press that up arrow and then you just got to make sure under mode, you change it from schedule to egg timer. But what that does is if you put an egg timer on anything you want, water features, pool lights, pool, it's only on the manual press does it go into the egg timer menu. So for example, let's say for example, um, you have an egg timer on your low speed, okay? And you come over here, manually press it, okay? That's a manual press. Two hours, it's gonna shut itself off, okay? Now, if I don't manually press this, but the timer kicks it on, right? The time clock, it's, it's 10 o'clock at night, and there goes my low speed. I didn't manually press that on. The timer turned it on for it. It'll go through the normal schedule, okay? It's only manual presses. So one, one cool thing I also uh, recommend too is if you have a spa, okay? You jump in the spa. Oh, something happens. You jump out of the spa and boom, you're down in the store. That spa is running. The heater's running. It's heating that spa until you get back and turn it off. So if, if you ever have that particular teenagers, let me tell you, they're fantastic at doing that stuff, right? Jumping in the spa and leaving without turning things off, then you got a gas heater that's running, okay? So if you want, you can go in and put a timer and egg timer on that as well. It's pretty cool. Can you, can you show me how you set the lights go on and off at a specific time every time? Yeah, absolutely. So ready menu, you're going to go back down to where it says schedules. You're going to press the select button. You're going to go down to whatever you want to put the egg timer on. Let's say the pool light. I don't want egg what if I just want to turn on the 8 o'clock and shut up? Yeah, you want to schedule? So then you'll go down to whatever you want. Let's say pool, pool light. Or you can keep going. See where it says waterfall? Right. Let's say I want my waterfall every day when I get home to be on. I'm going to press the select button. Okay? And remember, see zero of zero. Whatever is blinking, once, once you see something blinking and that's what you want to change, you instantly go over to the up and down arrow. So then you would press this non to new, bless you. And now that it says new, you're going to press the select button. And that's automatically going to give you one schedule from eight to five. Okay. okay. Automatically. So you will have, now you have for your waterfall, you have a schedule, you have eight to five. Now remember, if you want to change that, don't press the up and down arrow. I'm going to press the select until we find the number we want to change. Right, so once we select the times, then we just menu, menu, menu out of it. Right? Correct. So let's say for right now we want our time, we want that waterfall to come on at a certain time. We're going to press the select button, keep going until we see our time. And let's say we want this to come on at 4 in the afternoon. Okay. We change that. And then remember, select, select. And we can either leave it from 4 p.m. on, turning off at 5 p.m. And so now you have one schedule for your waterfall to come on at 4 at night and shut off at 5. Okay, one so hour blinking later. and you want to stay it on 5 you just hit the main button. Three yes, times. yes. So that's the thing. There's no enter button. There's no anything like that. Once, you, you, once you're happy with those times, whatever's blinking at this point, you just simply menu, 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 menu back out to your auto. And then if you want to check it, menu, back down to schedules, select schedules, go down to the function, remember waterfall. You see you have one there, that means one schedule or one egg timer. We're gonna select on that and see what it's doing. So we have one of one, it's a schedule, not an egg timer, and it's from four to five. So Some cool stuff. Yes, it just aerates it. I wouldn't say it would, you know, freeze the pool or make it extra cold, but it, it will aerate. So I highly recommend if you're heating, don't.
don't use your water features because it will aerate that water and cool it to a small degree. Not very much, but it will. Okay. So this is how you do functions. This is how you set schedules. Um, again, I have a pool light and I have a water feature at my house. I have a two hour timer on both. So anytime, and I've done it myself, I've kicked a pool light on, a water feature, and lit a fire, and 10 minutes later, I'm bored, I'm back in the house watching TV, and, you know, two hours later, everything shuts off. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. I had one for my fire pit. That'd be great, too. I can show you. <laughs> through the window and shut it off. <laughs> How do you, um, on the lights, select a different color? Boom. Perfect. Um, real quick, we got to wrap this up. And I'm sorry, it's, it's tough to jam a lot of information in one hour. Believe it or not, it's been an hour. So I'm going to go quickly over these lights. Uh, menu button. You're going to go down to lights, just like you would in looking for schedules, but you would go to lights. You're going to press the select button. That's going to put you into modes or colors. Modes are multiple colors. That means party mode, Caribbean, American flag, red, white, and blue. Modes are multiple colors. Colors are exactly what it means, colors. Um, so let's say we want to go to a particular color. Menu down the lights and press select. And then you have your blue, green, red, white, magenta, uh, and then a hold, which would hold it on the individual light. But let's say we want a red light. We would just press our select button. And what's going to happen here is you see this light going on and off now. What that's doing for you is that's finding that red color, okay? And that's going to turn your pool light on red. Now, before I get you guys too confused, you guys have multiple different lights out there. If you have the smaller round light about yay big, you may have two of them. That will not work off of this program. It'll only work with what's called the IntelliBright light. It's the bigger single light that you have in your pool. You'll, you'll definitely know. One's about, you know, seven inches um, and one's, you know, about 12 inches. Long. Okay. One's an IntelliBright light. Uh, one is what's called our Q360 uh, LED light. Okay. Both awesome lights, but for the function here, you have to have an IntelliBright light. So if you go here, you pick red, you go out and your pool's blue, it's probably because the lights don't link up with the control panel. Okay. Again, folks, I'm so sorry. I don't have more time for you. If you have any questions, um, definitely get with me after this, and I'll be happy to answer anything you can. Or if you have any troubles, get with me. I'll be happy to walk you through anything I can. But thank you again for being here. I appreciate your time. Again, an hour flies by. <laughs> we need to make these two hours long, you know? A little bit. I mean, you get a little bit of information. Again, it gives you enough.